So the workshop is probably the emptiest it's ever gonna be. Today's job is to get the self-leveling down. The concrete is not as good as I want it to be for our finished floor, so it needs a little bit of work. So that's definitely a high spot. What I might do is actually circle any of the high bits. I know you can get the little tripod screws and if you were doing a proper screed, you'd be setting everything out that way. We're, we're pretty good across the whole floor. We've just got a couple of low spots. What I want to do is just know where those low spots are. So I'm going to set this laser up. I'm going to put it on the windowsill because that's kind of a good datum point. So you won't be able to pick it up on the camera, but I can see now just about make out the laser all the way around the room at a particular set height and that's not going to change. Even kind of bounce, it's not like we're on a suspended floor, nothing's going to bounce, we know that's not going to be changing. Spirit level, I put some tape on there so I can mark. Not sure if you can make it out, there's our laser. So let's tape this over to the high spot and we'll see if that is the highest spot on the floor. Well, that's not quite what I wanted to see. The low spot is about 25 mil lower. So I think it makes sense. We've got to grind down the high spots, otherwise we're going to be just pouring hundreds of pounds worth of screed down here. Um, I do want to screed the whole thing. I'm not going to try and feather it out. We're using an epoxy floor paint on this, so I want to make sure that it's a, a constant finish over the whole thing. So with that in mind, I found a cheap and cheerful Amazon special which may or may not give us a, a good way to grind down some of these high spots. Right, anyone have one of those days where nothing goes to plan? That nine inch angle grinder is just seized so tight I can't undo it. WD-40, heat, more leverage, nothing's doing it, so I'll deal with that another day. What I've got now is, instead of using this, which is obviously a normal speed angle grinder, this is a polisher, it's kind of a variable speed thing which I use for doing another concrete project. It takes like diamond discs and stuff like that. I've put it on there, it doesn't have a guard because of the style of machine it is, but there's no sharp bits on it. I'm just gonna be holding it down and I can also spray a bit of water down which might help suppress some dust. conventional way of route to go is to hire out a concrete grinder. It's basically a walk behind machine which is a bit more like a floor sander. That's going to grind down and smooth out all of your floor. That's great but it doesn't fill anything so it's not going to fill the hollows. So we'd end up in the same situation. If I want the floor to be relatively flat um, and, and level then the only way to do that is to improve it with a screed. If you're happy with the floor you just want it to be smooth then a grinder is a good way to go. If I could hunt down the old footage from when Dad did his workshop, I'll find that out because he had an old floor, he filled and repaired some areas, and then he went down with the grinder and, and sorted it all out to make it nice and smooth before he did an epoxy.
over here, there's a couple of little bits from where I washed down the floor where it's still a little bit tacky, but by the time we get to that, it should be okay. I've got a bunch of this foam tape, I'm gonna sit that down on this threshold just so we've got something to put the screed up against. Right, confession time. I'm gonna cut a corner, unlike me, I know. Uh, this spiked roller that you get, which you basically roll over the self-leveling, it can help release any of the air bubbles at four minute. Um, it's not going to be here until tomorrow or even the day after, and you can't really get them locally. I think Top Styles do one and it's like 30 or 40 quid. I think, judging from what I've done in the past, I think we should be all right. We're just going to be, you know, troweling it out, placing it and letting it do its thing. It's not really going to self-level as such, it's more just self-smoothing. And as long as we don't have any lumps and bumps and air bubbles in it, we should be okay. Right, first up, we're going to start with the deepest area and then work away from there. I know I need about two or three bags alone just to do that dip. So we'll get that in and then we'll work across. progress update um, I don't know why I do it I always take on jobs like self-leveling when I'm working on my own anyway number one probably should have used a spike roller there's some slight air bubbles if we were being fussy um, some of them will naturally come out but I guess the spike roller releases them a lot easier but it's better than what it was I think there's gonna be a few ridges from where I've just troweled it in between mixes because I'm working on my own, um, but I can kind of ease those out tomorrow with the grinder before we do the epoxy. It's the next day. Let me show you how things turned out. It's really nice and smooth now and more level. It's never going to be completely level unless we threw 400 quid at self-leveling compound or got a screed poured in here. But I think it's a much better point than it was yesterday. Probably hard to make out the surface quality. We're going to need to prep this anyway to make sure it's got a good key for the epoxy. Let's see how that spirit level works out. So if you remember yesterday, I'd marked on in a few places, I can mark a new mark on, I guess. We'll pick a, a random spot. Oh, actually that one's good. So we'll use that as our kind of medium, just see if we've evened out the floor a bit. So within two or three mil, which is pretty acceptable. Probably about three or four mil there. Oh, that's much better over here. We have that real dip, if you remember. Still a bit low, but not, not anything to worry about. So it looks like I've poured too much here. It's the highest spot now, just there. 
It's a bit annoying. It's where I dumped that first load, I think. And I should have troweled it towards that wall and kept moving it that way. That side there, uh, it's that high spot there, which we've uh, messed up on. So we're pretty much there on the floor prep side. The whole floor is being keyed at about 80 grit and there isn't much more to do now apart from a good clean down, sweep down before, or maybe even a rinse down before the epoxy primer goes down. Let me share a couple of things I've learned along the way. One of the main issues was the air bubbles, little air bubbles that form, and most of them came to the surface and popped. Um, so you end up with just a few little dimples. We are going on with the high build epoxy anyway, so hopefully all of that will get filled. What I should have done is waited till today, which is five minutes ago, this turned up, which would have prevented all that. So this is a spiked roller, and by running this through, it helps to smooth things out a little bit, but more importantly, get rid of all the air bubbles, so it pops and releases them to the surface and I should have used it. Um, I was being impatient. But anyway, there's a lesson. I will stick a link to this down below if you want to do it properly. Now this morning when I came back in, it was not a polished finish, but it was nice and smooth and almost got a bit of a sheen to it. You want to knock that off before we get to the epoxy stage, and I'll maybe go through things in a bit more detail when we get to the first coat, the primer coat. But really, if you're using uh, epoxy over an old floor or even self-leveling like this, it's got to be keyed. One thing I did find is this diamond wheel worked really well at evening out just the little swipes where you've troweled between batches and things like that. And you can sometimes see those little swirls. This worked really well. I thought it would be too aggressive, but actually it's probably the same as about 40 grit. And if you're careful with it and just work it in small circles, it's great. I was using it on that variable speed polisher. I destroyed the motor on it. Um, this is quite a weighty thing and I guess it's meant to be used either on a floor machine or the angle grinder would manage it. I couldn't get the old blade off the angle grinder so therefore uh, I did about two thirds of the floor with this before it died and then I will switch back to the sander with an 80 grit. This whole process was not really necessary if you'd done a proper job in the first place. When you shut her out of the concrete, your levels at that point dictate everything. And at that point, I didn't have a laser level or any site measurement tools. I literally just had a six foot level uh, and a builder's square. So I did the best I could, but of course, it only takes your level to be out a little bit. And if you don't do an end to end type thing, and uh, just, it was a, must have been about 20 mil lower over here. Anyway, I am my worst critic and we're now at a point that yes, we had to spend an extra day on it and it cost, I think it was 180 quid to get all the self-leveling in here. Uh, hopefully you won't be out that much. So I guess if your concrete is fairly sound, then you could just hire a big floor grinder and grind it down and hope that any small repairs, that's enough ready for your epoxy. 
Otherwise, if you've got to do a self-leveling anyway, it kind of means you can avoid the hire, although you've still got to prep the self-leveling. And maybe I should have hired, but I'm just um, trying to use what I've got. This is getting a little bit costly, and I really need to get it done as soon as I can, because things are stacking up behind me, all the projects. It's getting there slowly, but thank you for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.